Welcome to the Big Water Podcast. I am Ross Robertson. Normally we're out fishing. That's what I do for a living. But sometimes we like to talk about it too. So make sure you stay tuned, subscribe, because we're going to have the podcast. We're going to have behind the scene tips, tricks, some stories, and some flat out just good smack talk with some of the biggest names in the game. And this is right here, Big Water Podcast. Welcome to the Big Water Podcast. I'm Captain Ross Roberts and all things fishing. That's what I do. At any rate, I've got a good friend of mine. I don't even like telling people you're my friend, but Joe Okada, the tournament guru, the thinker. We're going to talk about all the things that Joe Okada is that you probably don't know. But thanks for coming on board, Joe. Thanks for having me, Ross. I mean, it's... Usually we don't, we don't actually get to look at each other when we're talking. And this is kind of, this is interesting. It is. I... Joel Okada. I don't know how you would describe Joel Okada. I'll be honest with you. How I always like to ask guys this because I don't even remember half the time. How did we even meet? I think I know, but I want to hear your story of it. Oh, God, was I was I tapping you on the shoulder for information at an Ohio tournament one day, potentially? I mean, I know I did at some point, but I don't know if that initiated our relationship. I don't know. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. Uh, how about this, Russ? Remember when people are coming to your neck of the woods? How many, do you ever get a phone call? Like, hey, what's going on? I haven't talked to you in a couple of years. I haven't talked to you. Just, I'm, I'm bringing out my two-year-old. We're just going to go look for a bunch of 10-pounders. And I just want to know if you had any ideas where they were. I was thinking just, about booking you for a guide trip. Where would we go if I did? <laughs> <laughs> and only want big fish. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I love eating 10-pounders. <laughs> no, you know, I think what it was was at the time, our mutual friend and your traveling partner to this day, Brett King, had, he owned Smooth Moves, and I worked with Smooth Moves at the very beginning, and we were we were working on development because I was on the Great Lakes, kind of known as the hence Big Water guy, and you guys were great friends, and I think that's how it kind of all came in. And to be honest with you, most guys that I've come across in tournament stuff, I don't want to be friends with because they're <laughs> <laughs> because they all just want fishing information. <laughs> So in, in reality, like Joe's a straight shooter, everybody, and I appreciate that. I don't even like saying that publicly, but I appreciate that because there's there's not an evil bone in Joe's body. But to be honest with you, you're not even the most famous Joe Okada. <laughs> Can we go there? We absolutely. I, so if, tell him, you tell Google. him if you Google Joe Okada, you just so you know, you may not find the fishing Joe Okada. This is who you're gonna find. All you got to do is Google it and you'll see, I, I think he's considered the last samurai. Uh, I think that's his slogan, the last no, no, samurai. No, no, people, th this is no joke. This is a real deal, true he's story. He's the real deal. This guy has been on Jay Leno. I think he even sliced a sliced an apple off somebody's belly on, live on Jay Leno with his sword. I mean, he's the real deal. And we're, and we're friends on Facebook just through our um, identical names. So I've, I'm actually feeling pretty special there. Yeah, I can remember after a tournament where we all did good. And you're like, you know, we're all just giving guys shit back and forth. And I'm like, you're not even the most famous Joe Cotta. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah, and I, and I think it was Brett that actually brought that up to me that gave me that little, um, you know, ammunition, if you will. But <laughs> but in all seriousness, let people know, you know, I know Joe Okada. I know what you're doing now. Take me back to the beginning. I mean, to make a we both make a living in the fishing industry. That's what we do. And a lot of people say they do, and no disrespect to them, but, you know, they're working at a, at a, at a machine plant or whatever it is. Me and you both make our 100% income in fishing in one way or the other. And we'll talk about this as we go on. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, tell me early on, you know, how that bug got there because you just don't start doing this. You don't start guiding. You don't, there has to be, there's a, there's a framework. And sometimes it's a good story, sometimes it's not. But how did Joe get rolling? It's, a, it's an evolving, um, I guess, it, you know, it's not, uh, it's not just the fishing industry, Ross. It's, I'd consider it the fishing and boating industry, even with you. Uh, it, it, the, that you can kind of combine both of them together. I mean, go, going back to when you and I were starting, you had, used to have ICAS and IBEX in the same in the same arena. You know, when they were both going on at the at the same time, pretty much. And um, it, it, so it's a it's a very there's a, there's a lot of a, a lot of mixing and matching going on uh, crisscrossing in both industries. Right. But it, it all start when I first started. 
It was, uh, I was working in a, a bait shop in Madison, Wisconsin, right out of high school. And that's what I used to start my guide business, kind of to assemble a clientele through that bait shop. And, um, and, and then you, you learn some marketing skills to help promote your service. Uh, and, and those marketing skills led to other opportunities within the industry as your contact and network uh, grows. And, and then 20 something years later, here, here we are, and it's kind of unraveled it into a, a pretty diverse portfolio, I, I would say, but it's not all, it's not all hinging on one aspect of, of just one part of the fishing industry. Well, you know? and, and me and you have kind of done the opposite end on how we've done that, which I don't want to get into me too much because this is more about you today, but it's all about you, Ross. I, that's how I, uh, that's how I like it. I mean, that's, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I mean, maybe if we had the samurai Joel Catahan, I'd give a shit what he had to say, but in, in reality, I mean, that's what you have to do with any business is, you know, we diversify and, but I mean, I guess even going back a little farther, I mean, I think I know the answer to this because your tournament partner back in the day was who? Brett King. Before that. Robert Blosser, my father. Uh, I, Pops. I mean, again, when it I didn't comes know down how to, far back you yeah. wanted to go. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, your, your dad, I mean, again, you're working a bait shop, but that, 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 hey, I want to fish or I want to fish for a living deal. That's got to get laid. I mean, when did you know I want to fish for a living? Mm. When they, well, for, for sure, in 1999, when the PWT Championship came to Madison, Wisconsin, and I, I was one of those guys out there in my, I had a, a like a 15 or 16 foot uh, little tiller boat with 1970s or 80s model. I don't even remember what it was, but I, I was out there watching them on my favorite little rock pile and they were just clustered on there. But when it, it, it became real, when I got to interact with them, when they came to the town, um, some were looking for information, just like the, the playing the tournament game. So I got to see, I got to see how anglers use every, you know, every, every piece of possible information to, to put together a game plan. But that's, that's beside the point. Anyways, when they came to town and it became real and there's a crew of guys making a living as tournament professionals, that's when I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And that, uh, and then it was just full steam ahead trying to get to get to that point at some point in my life. And a lot, and sorry, before you keep going, that's and then a lot of that ended up going to competing with my dad uh, on team tournaments, just so I could get some legs underneath me, learn how le learn the ropes of tournament fishing, and and learn how to play the game. And it was thanks to dad letting me kind of be the only cook in the kitchen at the in the boat at the tournament where where decisions whether they were good or bad they landed on my lap, and and just being able to work through those things and, and work through that learning process for over the course of a few years is the whole reason that I was able to even kind of continue along with that. Well, and that's why I think it was important. That's why I brought it up that your dad was your partner because the reality yeah. is me and you without naming names have seen an awful lot of guys go south with tournament partners. I mean, a lot. And then also, like you said, the decision-making process. So you aren't second guessing or now all of a sudden this decision caused a bad one here where you would have made that decision. Because once you get to a level of, I would say like we are, but you know, a comfort level with the techniques and doing things as guides even, let's forget tournaments for a second, it becomes decision-making, plain and simple. Do I go left? Do I go right? Do I go up? Do I go down? Do I speed up? Do I slow down? It's, it's those little things. And people ask me all the time, I had that question this morning. And the answer is you don't really know. You try to use your experience on it, but you try not to fall back on that too much either. I mean, because sometimes I think, you know, we've talked about this on your home body of water. Sometimes you know too much and you don't fish the damn conditions. Yeah. And, and that's just, that's a reality. But absolutely. So at any rate, so here, t walk me through this again. So Joe's getting out of, out of high school, the bait shop deal. We start doing some guiding, kind of part-time. Roll me into where we're doing it. Uh, well, the, uh, in, in order to be successful in the fishing boating industry, you have to have a, a really sound network of people in your circle that you trust 100% for both as, as a mentor, as a friend, um, as, a, as business partners, wh whatever. And a lot of that came through the retail side, you know, through, through contacts I made at the work, just working at the bait shop, which led to, uh, you know, another retail job eventually. And Same for me. And, yeah, and, and you learn you learn interaction with consumers through that process. You learn interact. You, you know you learn the the framework for how um, how how reps how, how the repping industry works and 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 how how the wholesale industry works on different levels. And and you learn the chain of command throughout the whole thing. And you learn key contacts in in every one of those 
parts of the business. And uh, over time, your network grows and opportunities come right along with it. If if you're someone that can, you know, provide value to either one of the, any one of those aspects of, uh, of the fishing industry. And I don't know if that's being too vague, but I, and I don't know how deep we want to dive into this, but you know what I'm saying, right? Well, yeah, I mean, the reality is, is the, the fishing industry is a network based deal. It, it, but anything is. I mean, if you're an outside sales rep, you're doing pharmaceuticals, there's not a lot of difference, right? Um, it's just what we're, what we're selling. People don't realize we're selling lures. We're selling boats. We're quite literally doing both of those. Um, we're developing things. So, so you get out of there, and, and what is the next step? I mean, I, I know some of these things, but I don't even know your entire story, to be honest. Yep. Um, actually, one of my first contacts that I, that I approached as just as Joe, the, the hope to be pro fisherman someday, um, I, I actually contacted uh, a company called, they're Pro Mariner. They're actually, it's an onboard uh, charger company, um, power conversion company. It's, it's, you know, power version uh, from, from big boats all the way down to the, to the smallest boat. And um, I learned a lot through those guys. Actually, I started with them in 2004. Um, almost took a full-time position with that company as we get, grew to know each other and um, establish roles within that company that I was able to do things with them from, um, you know, call center training and, and retail store training and, and store sets and um, all, all sorts of things. But it, it was a, that was probably one of the most valuable um, employment windows I've ever, I've ever been a part of to learn as different aspects of, of this industry. And from there it grew to a being able to apply what I learned there to, uh, to other companies and adding value to other companies. And before you know it, you're, you're working with a whole lot of other people and, and that's kind of where we are today. But I owe a lot to, to that company out in New Hampshire. And I know that you almost took a role with them because we, we talk in these things. And, and oh. while nothing against that company, I think that probably wouldn't have been the best for you just because of some of the things that were involved with that and not allowing you to, you know, to do what you do today. But all those little things, like I said, some things run their course. And then other things just, you know, they open other doors. And that's the thing that it's sometimes you just have to have, have kind of have faith with this because there is no, there's no, there's no groundwork or everybody, you know, guys that sitting at home that want to say, Hey, I want to do fishing stuff for a living like Ross and Joe. Don't worry about wearing a tournament shirt. Don't wear a tournament shirt with competing <laughs> logos at the sports show. I just saw that left one. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you have Rappel, a reef runner and, and bomber on your shirt and, and make yourself valuable. You know what I mean? That's what the, it's just funny. We won't get on a tangent on that yet, but you know, again, you, cause God, that could go south fast, right? <laughs> fast. Right. But making yourself an asset, you know, that's, that's the question I ask some of these younger guys that, you know, I, I want somebody to help me, you know, in my business, we're hiring yeah. people, you're hiring people with the stuff that we do now because we've built these things up. But the reality is, is these young guys, they want to just start jumping in, be a CEO. In, and they tell me, and I say, okay, yeah, I'll hire you. What, what, what are you good at? And then, uh, uh, I got a tournament <laughs> shirt. I don't know. <laughs> So I mean, I, we, we might have to dig into that one. In a, in a oh, we're going. Oh, we're going there. But I still want to know. I think people at home they want to hear me shut up. They want to hear more about Joe and the progression. I mean, I, what what I don't. One of the things that I want people to understand, whether it's a twenty year old kid trying to get into fishing, or it's a sixty year old guy, or whatever, some fireman thinks he's going to you know take an early retirement and do this is. The level of commitment that you've put in, and you know I've put in as well, because we do. Our careers are actually fairly similar. I mean, they're they're different, but they're similar. And, you know, the sacrifice that you've had to make, just like myself, with like the Escanaba trips. I mean, I've seen some of the pictures. Obviously, I knew you. This is before social media stuff really was going. When I see some of those stuff and you're making pancakes on this just shitty little hotel deal and it's 20 <laughs> below and you're, 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 you're sleeping all day, right? Again, I, I should probably let you tell the story. But, you know, tell me about as these, these guiding things, you know, what you did. I mean, you lived in, as I did, in, in a shitty hotel at times as you follow the fish. I mean, that was part of the deal. Actually, I take the, the last two years. I haven't even gone up there uh, for two different for different reasons. But um, basically, it was a it was a two decade run where I would run up there for up to six or better weeks a year, and um, and just just become a nocturnal um, trolling monster up there. I, I I that's I learned so many really awesome runs. I learned so much about Great Lakes fishing and Great Lakes fish behavior. Um, you know how to how to how to control a how to control a boat in some of the nastiest most, in the nastiest conditions. And when you're in, and when you're in the middle of Lake Michigan in the middle of the night in 
really crappy weather, you know, you, you, the element of, of sight, you don't see where you, you don't see where you're trolling anymore. You know, you're relying on your on your on your graphs. You rely on the feel of how your boats, you know, quartering with this with the with the movement of the waves. You watch your board spread. So you see how everything's aligned. I mean, you, you, you start to digest so many other things and it's and to you have to digest all that information blind, basically, because it's pitch black. And by doing that over the course of 20 years, you actually you, you, you develop a different feel for for how you're fishing. And it, it, it sounds weird, but it's it just be like if you closed your eyes and walked around your house for, for a month, you know, you you would pick up tones of uh, when, uh, you know, a certain creak in the floor would happen. You know, you're three steps away from taking a left to go down the stairs or whatever. But that's that's where you, you, you get very in tune with with um, with with your with, with a really good foundation of how to how to catch fish and different conditions people so knowing what little things make a difference and what really doesn't is one of the keys and you know i think guiding is huge for that because it allows you time in the water like i currently have people wanting me not to guide as much because they feel i'm valuable in other assets and, and ways and which is true but the reality is, is i still got to be out there a lot i got to be working on these new techniques and you know just like tomorrow you know middle of the week and you got to try to find a couple of buddies to go because everybody's working. They got family stuff going on, but I got to get out there because the weather is great. And I got some new stuff to shoot. We got some prototype stuff. We're shooting some catalog images and I will get into that. But same thing with you is, you know, you look at Al Linder, you look at, you know, we've shot stuff with, with Scott Stecker from Reef Runner, you know, Chip Cartwright, Silver Streak Lures. All these guys have one thing in common. Al Linder, like I said, they were guides. And time on the water, instead of you being able to, you know, go do it on your own and eat, I don't know, Ritz crackers, you're making at least some money, right? <laughs> <laughs> at least some money. I mean, not that this is like, you ain't getting rich doing this, but you're on the water, you're learning on somebody else's dime. I hate to say it that, not that these kids nowadays should be running out and say, I'm gonna be a guide. Cause if I see one more Facebook guide thing pop up, I'm gonna just shoot myself. <laughs> Learn how to fish before you become a guide, you know? I mean, I take it pretty seriously. I don't wanna go off on a tangent like this, but I know me and you think the same. I look at this as I've got, you know, Tom and Betty from Iowa. They're coming for four or five days to fish with me on Erie. I'm not there to learn how to fish on their on their vacation. I take it very seriously. This is their fishing trip of the year. And they 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 put you know their time and, and, and trust in me. And I know you are the same way. Like we take this, we take this serious. Like I fish, I've got about four thousand days guiding. And the reality is that's a lot of days. But you break that down and you start going. I had to know stuff before I did that. And I've learned a lot during that process, but I, I'm not going to go out there and try to learn the main things on that. And nowadays, I think that's where people, they just, Hey, I'm going to go get paid to go fishing and take somebody. And that's yeah. not really what a guide is. I mean, are you, are you with me on that? A hundred percent dude. But at, at, at some point in our careers, we were both, we were both, although we had fairly solid foundations, we were still new guides. And and even even a solid fisherman is not a good guide right off the bat. I had you had you have to learn your people skills. You've got to learn your timing. You've got to learn how to play out a day from start to finish. Whether it's whether it's the progression of a day. Look for ex for example, you, you 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 know, a bluegill trip for example. You know you you may you might know where the largest mother load of bluegills are in the lake. But do you do you jump on that right away, or do you know that it fires better in the afternoon? So you got to go milk a little weed line and get people warmed up and get people used to how to fish before you go. Time you know, management, time. people. Time management is one of the biggest keys in guiding. I should. That's one of the simplest tricks I could tell somebody, but they. I don't even want to tell people because it's so simple. But it absolutely is one of the most important things. Don't catch them too fast. Don't catch them too slow. Time management. It doesn't even sound right. It does. It. it but it is. It, and, and and how a day plays out. And leaving that lasting impression in the final hours of the day, that's 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 how you keep your repeat business uh, high, like at almost a hundred percent. As long as people are in town, they want to come out and fish with you, and uh, and and knowing how to have people have an, an enjoyable day on the water from start to finish is just as important as being able to actually catch fish. So. Guiding is tough, man. I mean, there's so many people don't realize it's not just about catching fish. You know, obviously safety is the primary thing, which I see some guys don't even get me going on that deal. But the, the reality is, is yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not like a guy who took people out in snowstorms in Escanaba in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in, in, in all seriousness, just going with that, the reality is, is there are certain clientele. And I, I, I would like to know if you had to do this. I have to tell certain people like, hey, Bob, you're not a March and April guy in Lake Erie because you don't move so good in the boat. You don't have the right clothing. I don't know if you ever experienced that with guys like, hey, this is nasty. It's cold. I mean, it's serious. 
One slip, dude. That's all it takes. One I'm, slip and your your career is over. I mean, so. have, have you ever had to tell a guy like, "Hey, I I can't, you know, I don't think you're a candidate for this, or I don't think we should do this again," or? No, um, but one time in Madison, we were fishing. It was below freezing, and uh, and shame on me for you know, I, I actually was just he was ex exiting the boat. The day was over, and he was getting out of the boat, and there was a glaze of ice on the fender. And he hopped out. I didn't, you know, I was already tidying up the boat, doing everything else. I look back and he is on the ground, not moving. Oh. And I just looked and I, and my, my stomach just, I mean, it, it was terrible. He didn't even flinch. I ran up there. I grabbed him. He was, he was conscious. He just was in a lot of pain. Um, 10 minutes later, he was walking around like nothing ever happened, but just it, it's it's a it, man. It takes one slip, and uh, the trajectory of your career can change in a heartbeat. So, and again, you know, I, I, I've got steps on my boat trailer now, and I almost wonder, like, how in the hell did I not have those five, ten years ago? I mean, I can't even be. I can't even. I can't be without them. I mean, it's this is before I had my easy steps on my boat. By the way, just in case <laughs> my my buddy from Easy Steps watching, it wasn't those steps. It was a trailer <laughs> fender, Mark. <laughs> and, and, and you know what the reality is? Is I still get people that are like, "Oh, I'm going to climb out the side here." I'm like, "Bob, what is? It's not a jungle gym. Use the steps. <laughs> Use the steps. What are you thinking over here?" But so, at any yeah. rate, so you, you know the guiding thing. You rolled into the Escanaba. How young were you when you first did that? I had to be not much high school age. Past. Man, I I was 16 years old the first trip I went up, and um, and I didn't even allow anybody in my boat until I was. Uh, well, yeah, you gotta be 18 my, to have a captain's license, right? In my low 20s, got my captain's license at was it 18? I, I don't it, know. I've had it for like 15 years. I've had it for a long time now. I don't even. I, I'm not gonna tell people how many how many renewals I've done now. But is it three? Are we at three or four? I'm at four. You're you are a little bit older, but I, I had to go. I went down to Florida for mine back then. Uh, there wasn't even a program I don't think set up in Wisconsin. Now you can just do it online. It's 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 uh, it's amazing how accessible that credential is nowadays. Um, and, but I and I but honestly I can't say that I remember everything from there either. As far as the, the, the you know the paper navigation and all that stuff that we got to re up every once in a while. Green <laughs> over white sailboat at night. That's all Something I got. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, nobody's going to remember that stuff. Nobody, the, the reality is nobody else in the other boat remembers it either. So we're good. Like yeah. amber lights on a submarine at night. Like I've never seen any of those on Lake Erie. If I do, we probably got bigger <laughs> problems than what kind of lights they are. But yeah. So now you got into the tournament deal. Is that, that's kind of when that started. You, I know you're a comp super competitive guy. So that, that's where the juices were flowing. I mean, you just said, like you said, back to the Madison PWT. We got to go back though, Ross. It's, I, I wanted to be the best fisherman I could possibly be before I even wanted to be Joe the Pro Tournament Walleye Guy. And, and that's really and important for people at home. This is this is something I I don't I'm not I'm not trying to preach a message here or drive any points home for anybody, but it's it might be worth mentioning that um, sometimes you know in some aspects today we're seeing we're seeing a generation come up that is striving for the the glory of being top dog in a competitive realm before they just want to master fishing it, itself and i'm not i have not mastered fishing nobody has not even you ross but um, if you think it, you've mastered it you are the biggest ding dong in the world because it's an ding every, dong. no one no one will ever master it it's worse than golf because there's but more you, variables i think but you have to love it that much i mean you have to you have to love it like you want to conquer fishing with or without competition it's you have you want you have to love fishing that much <laughs> you and, know in the springtime i fish like i at least try to fish about 100 days in a row i can tell you 27 days is my breaking point <laughs> 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 and, and again it's a little harder at my current age than when i looked like opie and i'm sure it's the same thing for you but the reality on these things is I just had, it's just, I mean, I've had it a lot, but just even a week ago, I had somebody same thing. Hey, you know, can you get me a sponsorship with this XYZ company that you work with? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah. So why would they hire you? Well, I know you. I'm like, that's not going to work so good. That, that doesn't sound like a good sustainable plan right there. You're exactly right. I, I, I think I like to fish and I don't know, maybe this is, this is going to be off, off with you, but I've been around Al Linder, you know? And I've done stuff with him. The dude is, I don't know how old he is, Al. Al, sorry, 70 something. That dude is still more competitive than me and you. And it ain't about Probably. money. It ain't about money. I mean, he is insane. You know, at a charity event, he was casting over the top of people. Sorry, Al. 
<laughs> but he is super, super, super competitive at 70 something and life's been very good. I don't think he has to worry about paying bills at this point, right? So, I mean, I look at him as, as you wonder why he is the super freak machine that I think helped develop and, and lay the groundwork for people like me and you. He honestly, I don't know if you know this, he told me back in the early days, he's like, hey, bub, you got this fishing thing pretty good. You need to do education. You education's what you need to do. You need one of them web thingies. <laughs> and, and I mean, as funny as it is, but I mean, I literally had a website, you know, backwards. I mean, we're talking really, really simple. And I ran two man education trips, you know, and that was one of my niche things. And I, Al of all people is, is one of the guys that kind of helped me get going on that 20 some years ago. Education 20 years ago, though, is different than education now as far in terms, especially in terms of accessibility, but also in terms of how, how thorough and um, how deep down, how deep you want to go in certain rabbit holes as you try to learn more about fishing. And um, I mean, can just talk into my phone now and ask Siri or who, a fishing question and I will find an answer. 20 years ago, you didn't do that. And you, by, by not being able to do that, you had to go learn by being on the water, you know, for many, many hours. And I wonder if that, di if that dynamic you know, as it's changed has also shifted with how passionate people are at the core with with fishing in general because absolutely some, if, it's if, a if you were starting up fishing and someone hands over a playbook of of how to how to fish to you and, and where you don't have to work for it and you don't have those small little incremental victories to get you to a level where you feel like you have you, you're pretty sound at, at, in fishing then is it is it as rewarding and gratifying and do you want to continue doing it if it's all just handed over and i sometimes i wonder if that what the what the effects of how accessible information is these days you've just hit, not that it's a bad thing you've just hit the matrix thing and this isn't exclusive just to fishing but i think a lot of people to your point they just do it because it's kind of a cool deal where i mean i get people that send me facebook messages say hey can you give me some coordinates you know where you're fishing and and they send me these friend requests and, and you're just like well now we're buddies where i back in the day had to have legit relationships with the gary roaches and the joe okadas and that like nowadays it's just it's a digital thing people think because they hit the friend request button on facebook or they follow you on instagram that now all of a sudden you're, right hey joe can you tell me what your contract is there with uh whatever that is on your hat there <laughs> i mean and it's funny but th that that is a, it's a real reality it's different yes and then as the social media administrator for a, a handful of, of companies, the the requests have changed over the years too for people um, seeking alignment with with different companies. It's people are going about it differently now. Um, man, we uh, is this the only time you're going to have me on, or are we going to do this again? Because we could really we could kind of dive deep into many topics. We're, we're I'm thinking about firing you actually mid mid podcast. <laughs> Are you? No, no, no. No, okay. we, we definitely can do more. But the 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 fishing industry, yeah, we don't want to get too much on a business tangent. But Nope, the, don't want to do it. But but the reality is I think I, I, with you, because we both make a true living in fishing and have for a long time and definitely have, have changed with the punches, as you would say, um, I think there's a lot of people out there just because the amount of messages and people that stop me that ask like, hey, how do you do this? How do you do this? I want to do this. I don't think most of them understand or, or really want to do it, to be honest, but they at least ask. So sometimes throwing this out there, even if it's not the answer they want to hear, here's two guys that have been there, done that. And again, me and you used to be the kid. Like I used to, I faced age discrimination. I remember I used to drive Gary Roach's boat because I wasn't old enough to drive his truck. I didn't have a driver's <laughs> license. Like that's how long I've been doing this. And I, and I was the kid. Now I'm at boat launches and every now and then like, hey, old man, get on my way. And I'm like, there's no way he's talking to me because I can still <laughs> out bench press that kid. <laughs> That's awesome. I almost I'm not going to sit here and butter your bread too much, but you've been a guy that I've been able to call throughout the last. Have I known you for over 10 years now? I have. Oh, a, lot, I? a lot more than that, Joe. It is. I think it is. But it, it's, oh, way more than that. Oh, yeah. Holy way cow, I'm getting old. It's about. It's about 15 or 16 Well, in, it, in that range, I, I believe, it, believe it or not. I've made some pretty uh, important phone calls and I, I hope uh, important phone calls to you regarding um, either opportunities or career paths or things of that nature. And you, you've been a good, one of the best resources for me to pick up the phone and, and either get realigned 
or have another perspective on on which way to go. And for anybody else that's that's trying to find their own recipe to 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 kind of make their own path in this fishing industry, you, you have to have a handful of people like that available to 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 make it work. Otherwise, it's pretty near. Uh, it's a it's a pretty tricky road to navigate without. Well, so. I, I appreciate that. And I definitely don't want to get too sappy either. But no, nope, <laughs> not with you. No, because no. you know I'll roast you. But so the yes. the reality though <laughs> is, is is there's not many people that are really making really making a living. I'm talking about a guy that's got a trust fund and other things, and we could God go on a really good tangent about that. The saying I, I <laughs> blah. <clears throat> but the reality is is there's not many people that are doing what we do and really even want to, or even they say they do. But I think that the other thing is just the trust factor. Like I trust you, you're a straight shooter, you know, vice versa doesn't go, you know, there's, there's no BS. And, and that's, that is a tough thing to find in life. It, you know, forget just fishing. The reality is these guys, I mean, tournament fishermen are, I, I don't, I'm not saying this across the board, but they, they'd sell their mom for a quarter, I think. And that's only, <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, that's the reality. Hey, can we, since, since there's not an actual time limit here, I wanted to introduce somebody to you for the first time. Well, before, do you, before you do, I want to tell you that I already know where this is going. And go that's, ahead. And no, that's, let's, and, let's hear and it. That's great. All right, mind reader. Come on. I'm not going to say what has happened as we travel fishing tournaments together and some of the things and you know all kinds of craziness we've done, but I never thought that I was going to see baby carriages in the background and that the, yes. Joe, the Joe Okada that I know would have fish mounts in the background and not baby carriages <laughs> and like nookers and stuff, but you're a different <laughs> Joe and that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because you, you've developed, you've gone, you've worked older how we're, we are getting to be old people by dude <laughs> yeah let's not dwell on that but yeah. i have my office has now shifted up to here where I, this has now become my my kitchen my bedroom my office my nursery and uh oh, oh uh, that's pretty that's pretty much it but <laughs> two weeks ago here jamie come here i wanted to just introduce to you abigail rose and i just wanted to show her off to you for the first time because over the past year you've told me that you'd be surprised if she didn't look like me more maybe more like the ups man is that <laughs> quote that, that, I, that i heard from you and uh i'm sorry mrs okada i'm sorry mrs okada about saying that the ups driver so this is familiar. abigail rose and she is the first thing that has that has deviated my train of thought that when i'm sitting here at night trying to go through some different thought processes it's not always about fishing and it's thanks to her and that and that is so a I really just want to thing. introduce and she i is a doll she is and i'm and glad I'm to hand her out before she's too wide here i'm Thank so you. glad that she looks like her mother <laughs> <laughs> anyways i was i was waiting to show her off to you because I, I just remember you telling me or when i when i told you we were going to have one you're like you better double check to make sure she looks like you. I, I, I might have privately said something about the UPS driver or the FedEx like or that. both. or you, Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hair's the same. See? Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I, it's, I go into that whole thing, busting your chops. Some of that we probably can't do now. But <laughs> <laughs> even I know that there's a boundary. Even I cloud it and I ride it and I, I'm right on the edge, but there is a boundary. So in all reality, what has been the other development? I mean, you're working right now. I mean, you want to talk about who you're working with currently? I work with, uh, I wear a, a bunch of hats, but um, one of my primary hats is actually through uh, uh, through another industry contact who has also been a, a mentor for me for over 10 years. He introduced me to uh, to the company of Bass Cat and Yardcraft Boats, um, and, the, and the president of the company, Rick Pierce, and I have uh, developed a, a really... Um, a really good working relationship in the over the last six years, and it's thanks to him giving me an opportunity. You know, when I when I first went to the company, it was more more or less as um as just Joe though the walleye guy. You know, wanting to wanting to run their product because I I was absolutely a fan of Yarcraft boats before I became uh, an employee of the company, and um and and now. It's uh, I, I get to I get to do a, a lot of different things with the company from the, in the marketing and advertising um, sectors and as well as promoting their product, you know, as I as I fish competitively and it's uh, it, it's 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 working out really well and, and honestly it's it's thanks to it's thanks to the last few years with that company that uh, we've been able to keep this this train rolling the way it is and um, I'm just I'm just very thankful for the opportunities that that uh, he's given me because I didn't have a piece of paper 
that said I I went to school for any of this. I would just, but don't think for a second that I didn't spend every waking moment trying to fine tune skill sets that made me an asset to that company. Uh, uh, you know, a, a couple of years of sleepless nights, kind of you know building my foundation behind a computer, not just on the water. Well, to to make sure that I. I'm a, yeah, I don't think people realize. I mean, I won't get into the specifics, but I mean, you're doing things, building catalog stuff. Um, I mean, it's, it's a lot different than some of the bluegill guiding you may be doing on Monday. Um, you know, you, there's there's a lot of different roles. <laughs> there's a lot of different roles here, and it's the same with me. These things are constantly evolving, but you really need to, to diversify because just like any business, things go up and down. I tell people all the time when I'm in, in, in meetings and stuff, I say the guy that had the monopoly on the phone booth thought he was pretty freaking smart. So. I hope he put his nickels away because this techno <laughs> technology has a way of just kicking you in the butt. Um, yeah. And that's why some of these younger guys do have an advantage over some of the old guys that we both know and are, think are great fishermen. But the reality is, is these guys are not, you know, grasping 360 side imaging and, and mega imaging and all these things. And the stuff that just flat out will help you catch more fish. And then also on the flip side, just like us sitting here doing a podcast, there's a lot of fishermen we both know that are like, I'm not doing a podcast, dude. It, all the technology and things that go in with it. And that's the things that you, you really have to embrace because if you don't, you're going to get left behind. Agreed. Yep. So, and, 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 you know, to add to that, it's, um, the, 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 the larger your portfolio becomes, you also have to manage that to a certain point because there's, there's only so much time. And so making yourself available is great, but eventually you, you know, you, you do have to start to value your time, um, that you're able to commit to everybody and only align yourself with companies that, that do uh, see that see that value that time is is a significant value to what you're adding to that company and if if you don't feel like that's a two way street you you know you got to keep keep hunting and keep trying to diversify so I don't take anything for granted at this point I think you know but the reality is is the ability to say no I don't know I want to say I'm there but I now do say no to projects where I used to just yes yes whatever I could do and again part of it's time but then also you just realize as you create your brand and things that you know you can't you can't take care of the, the right things the things you have to do by just saying yes all the time but when you get in a situation where the business is good enough that you can say no that's a very, very powerful tool, whether it's negotiating or for your building your brand. Well, how, how has that worked for you? I mean, how many, when's the last time you had a 12 month open water guiding session on, or se guiding season on Lake Erie? Because right now you're, you're, you're eclipsing 12 months. And so what does that do for you when you're, when you're pumping out trips weekly instead of having a, you know, a couple months off to, to kind of regather and, and, and take care of loose ends. What are well, you, how is, how's that setting you up for later this year? If, if here's the reality, though, I mean, without getting too deep on in my stuff, you know, the, the companies and things that I do, guiding is, is not definitely not their focus. I think we, in in different ways, we're we're considered content providers. I mean, there are people that make their exclusive job just providing videos on YouTube or Instagram or something like that. Well, that's I think short sighted you know, in my portfolio of things, guiding becomes less and less. That's a big ass coffee mug. Jesus. You're going to have half a pot. If you have, and to, it has a fish if you it. have to pee and you're, and you slow up this train, God, <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have the samurai Joel caught on next time. But <laughs> in, in all seriousness, you know, the guide thing, uh, like right now, I mean, I was at sport shows. I was speaking at some private clubs. Um, I flew to sit with a sponsor and we talked about, you know, the year moving forward, we worked on product design. Those are things I can't do on the middle, middle of a boat. And just as you know, with what you're doing with, with Yarcraft and Basket, sometimes it's it, you've got a, a couple or whoever it is in the boat with you, you've got to be able to answer things on the phone now. And so I can't be floating around and take care of things all the time. So it, I, I try to balance that because then the reality is, is I can't be in an office all the time because then I'm not as good at the other role either. There's a lot of times I think, as you know, I'm pretty blunt. You know, I just get myself in trouble a little bit. You, Ross? No. I know. But the reality is I, I sat in a meeting, you know, probably about a year and a half ago, and I was kind of a dick. And I, I said what everybody didn't want to hear. And I could just see, you know, I mean, there was, there was audible groans in this. Well, now, coming back, 
just a couple months ago, they came up to me and said, oh my God, we're, thank God you brought that up and brought it to our attention because now we've saved this many, this many dollars and we didn't realize. Because these companies, one of the biggest assets that we have to them is they're in cubicles, they're in big cities. I mean, some of the companies I work with are in giant cities. They don't have, they couldn't launch a boat in, in six hours. And, and that's what we provide. It's that angler credibility. Uh, I mean, just like the, you know, the hat and the shirt that you have on, you're providing insight on the products, you're providing angler credibility, you're providing content, you're providing magazine shots, whatever it may be. Um, and it, it's just different. I mean, for me, I wrote a book, you know, I've got a DVD series, had a TV show, I contract host TV shows, radio shows, now podcasts, all of these things. There's not one thing like it used to be. Like back in the day, Al Linder, you had a TV show. Okay, that's enough to float the boat. Yeah, he's got a magazine too or whatever. Nowadays, that just doesn't work because things keep changing. Like Facebook's old. Like our parents are on Facebook. <laughs> Party's over, right? Now they're on Instagram. Well, now they're not on Instagram. They're on TikTok. I, some, the first time I heard about TikTok, I'm like, what, oh, in, gosh. what in God's name is this? I hope that doesn't get going. Now, <laughs> you know, we're Facebook living and uh, blah, blah, blah. where does it end? I mean, where does the accessibility end? This isn't a fishing thing. This is a life thing. I don't know. I think at some point it's going to come full circle where you where you're going to strip it down to a point where you just want to turn it off and go fishing. And it, it is it doesn't I don't know. We'll never get to that point, probably. But deep down inside, we, we want to be able to just shut it off and go back to fishing. I mean, that's that's what got our juices flowing, you know, X amount of years ago to, to, to even start this journey. And, well, uh, I, I know there's probably not many people I can say this to that are going to agree or someone's going to like hate mail is going to fly in on this one, but <laughs> screw it. I think the biggest thing that I dislike is I don't just get to go fishing. If I'm going, even if I'm with you in a boat, I'm still thinking I need to get some images. I need to shoot some short video, whether it's social media or catalog stuff, or hey, we just caught this giant fish. And not being able to just leave the phones or the video cameras at home, to me, is the worst part. Because again, I think it does suck the life out of a little bit. And I know everybody at home is going to be like, oh, cry me a river. I'm in a cubicle right oh, now. Oh, no, yeah, we're not, we're not. I, it, there's no whining. To, that's, that, and that's not it. That's not what you're saying. It's just, it, but yeah, I, I know exactly, I know exactly where you're coming from. It's, um, it's uh give me a good analogy here Ross. i'm gonna give Some... you i'm gonna give you a really good one a guy comes down at the sports show i just spoke at i literally just come off the stage him and his wife come over and they said hey man I, i've read your book i've watched this stuff can you give me some advice? So I'm walking back to the booth, you know, that we were at. And I talked to this guy for probably 10 or 15 minutes. He ends up telling me, <laughs> you're going to laugh. Well, I'm not going to try to compete with you, but I'm going to be a guide. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, so it turns out, I think he was a fireman, if I'm not mistaken. So he's like, I got the time, you know, I'm going to do this. He goes, so what's your suggestion? I'm like, don't do it. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you're going to have to buy more gear because they're going to break your gear and you're going to need more than you think you're going to need. And you're going to need this and you need this. And I, start, I could just see the look on his wife's face. Dude, she was just like turning white. Because I think she saw like the vacation money going. You know what I mean? The birthday present was going. It was just like spend, 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 spend. And I'm like, oh, by the way, you're going to have your days off. So now you have no days off. And so now you're going to have to hire somebody to cut your grass. And oh, by the way, at the end of the year, you're going to triple your insurance. And oh, you're going to have, and all these things that, you know, it was, it was a pie in the sky until he thought about like really what was involved. I'm like, oh, by the way, the worst part isn't this. I said, you're not going to love fishing because if you did, you've already would have done what I've done. You're not going to love that. You know what I mean? And again, I probably should have just been like, go for it, Tom. But the reality is these people think that there's, there's a different deal going on. And the college fishing thing, I think has helped. Help, it gives, it's given kids a lot of opportunities I know me and you wish we would have had, but I think it also has put a lot of pie in the sky for people that just, it's just false, I don't know if I'd say false expectations or, or just not being a reality, like you said, wearing a tournament shirt. Well, hold on a second, because I don't, I don't know if you, I don't know if, sometimes the path of least resistance is not the, the right path to take, and, 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 for you, for you and my situations, both. I mean, we're 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 both kind of navigating down different paths uh, uh, to some extent, even though they're they're eerily similar. But if there, there's no recipe book for establishing a career in in this in this industry, you have to carve out your own niche, and uh, that that either suits your strengths or you're able to acquire those strengths so that you can continue to fill up that niche. And, and and I agree that the youth programs and the the college and high school fishing stuff that's available now, 
it's offering avenues to pursue competitive avenues in, in, in the fishing industry, but it's, um, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I would just you just you just want to be careful to, to not, like you said, paint this big picture that that's the only path that you have to take if you want to find any success in in the fishing industry. You can you can absolutely carve your own path with with your own strengths. I mean, look, at, look just, at me and you. I mean, we do things fifty percent the same, fifty percent polar opposites. I yeah. mean, and me and you are polar opposites, obviously. <laughs> I mean, you, you are the only guy that's a professional fisherman that makes me look fat. <laughs> I put on seven pounds now, Ross. Which, uh, since high school, I put on seven pounds, and they've all come on the last the last. So basically, you're still swimming in a schmedium? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's a capri right now because I can't get the tall and skinny. So You, you yeah. know, and, and that's yeah. another thing with these companies out there. If anybody's listening, I know you're not. You don't care. We need talls. We need some talls in here. We don't need capris. <laughs> Yes, thank you in advance. <laughs> so in all reality, what else do you want people to know about Joe Okada the Fisherman? Because we're going to have you on again, and we're going to talk about like tournament fishing, and we're going to talk about the Joe that I know that most people don't know, which is the DIY Joe. Because you have come up, and we're not going to do that. This is, that's a whole other deal. But tell me about Joe a little more that we would want to know that people don't know. It's stuff I know. Um, I guess that's a good way to... To leave off, yeah, we can dive into other topics in another time. Um, for anybody that doesn't know me, it's I'm just a a fishing freak at heart. And b- before I was ever attracted to a walleye, I had the same obsession, if not more, with with carp. And uh, it, were you ever? Did you ever catch the carp bug by chance, Ross? I live. In the, I grew up on Lake Erie. We don't have to do that. <laughs> I didn't have. To, I didn't no. have to get special either but the reality the, no you, you are right i fished other things i mean because again when you're 14 12 you don't go out 20 miles on lake erie five days a week so absolutely if, if fishing these little just crap ponds and just i mean just getting getting a line in the water absolutely yes european carp fishing techniques i man i ate that stuff up the those guys are so specialized and they fine-tune their terminal and of their gear to a point that's it's ridiculous and it's it, i really admired that how those guys did that i wanted to move to europe and and become and and have someone take me under their wing and 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 show me that that stuff that they were doing um but that absolutely helped my geeky brain kind of grow so that i could apply a lot of those those same um those same things to to walleye fishing today or any other species of just my just to build my fishing foundation but anyways that's all i just love fishing a, a lot and i can't see myself wanting to work outside of this industry to any extent i because I, I i love this industry that we're in you and i didn't just paint the brightest picture for any i don't even know if anybody watching this what their objectives are to listening to us rant about stuff or, or talk that but, but the moral of the story is love your craft get good at it and 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 carve your own carve your own niche and um, I think and that's what you and i have done and yeah. you've done it as good as anybody i know i mean you've um you've done a good job and i but i hate to give you too many compliments because then your head's going to expand beyond this frame of my computer here yeah okay but you've done a really good job and you're taking it to the next level here with this podcast so i hope that i hope you find some success on that and and make sure you have me back on again because we can we can touch on, you know, specific subjects and even just talk talk fishing for all I care. I don't care. We, we've done two things here. We've ranted and we've also determined that you're not fired and you are allowed on another one without having a payment <laughs> is basically how this is going to work. Wait, I thought I was getting paid to sit here for an hour for you. Mm, but, not so much. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, maybe next good. time. Well, thank you for joining us and we will definitely do this again. Big Water Podcast with Joe Okada. I mean, I hope you'll. I mean, you might be too big of a deal to have me if I wait too long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Ross. Yeah. Joe, again, thanks for taking the time to join the Big Water Podcast. As always, everybody, bigwaterfishing.com, Big Water, everything. On Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, just about anything. If you type in Big Water, you'll have big fish stuff. That's what we're doing. Education, talking with guys like Joe Okada. Thanks for having us. Oh,